Hello guys, I'm Yadika Reddy and welcome to my channel HVR Tutorials. In this video, I'll explain about how you can log different type of information to the extent reports. So in my previous video, we have seen how to log the information using different log levels, right? But using all of these log levels, we have only logged the text type of data, correct? But when you are working with automation, there is no guarantee that you will always handle the text type of data only. Sometimes you may receive the XML type of data and sometimes you may receive the JSON type of data also. And maybe you will receive some collection type of data, maybe a set of values or list of values or any map of values, right? So you need to know how to log all these kinds of informations also into the extent reports. Because when you are working with automation, there will be so many types of data that you will handle. So if you want to log that information into the extent reports, you should know how to do that. So that is why we will learn all those things in this video guys. So we are going to cover all these points. First we will see how to log the text information into the extent reports. So this we have already learned, right? We have seen how to log the text based information using different log levels also, right? But we haven't seen how to log the text based information in the bold and italic format, right? So I will show you all the formats here guys how to log the normal data and how to log the text based information in the bold format and also in the italic format also. And then when you are working with any API, you will send some request and you will get the response, right? So your response may be in the format of XML or maybe in the format of JSON also. So some of the APIs send the response in the JSON format and some of the APIs will send the response in the XML format, right? So maybe you want to log that response into the log files. That means the extent reports basically, right? So that means you should know how to do that. So I will show you those things also. And then collection data. So maybe when you are working with any drop down or any list of values or any set of values, you need to log those informations also into the extent reports. So that also we will see. And then highlight any message. So under one test, you may have so many log events, right? So out of all those log events, you want to highlight one particular log event with some color coding and all. So how you can do that? That also I will show you, fine. And then exception. So when you are working with automation, you will always receive some exceptions, right? So you want to log that exception so that you can track like because of what exception, how many test cases are failed. So in the sample report, we have seen already, right? So we have an option to track how many test cases are failed because of what exception, right? So for that, we need to first log the exception. So we will see how to log the exception details also into the extent reports. Right? So don't worry guys, I'm going to explain all these points in detail in this video. Fine. So let's get started. First, let me open the Eclipse. So I'll just copy paste this class. And let me open the chapter 5 class. So this is the one we are going to work on guys. Fine. So in the previous video, we have already seen how to log the information with different type of log levels. Right. So now what we will do we will see how to log the different type of information itself, correct? So for every one type of information, I'm going to create one test so that you can see clearly guys, okay? First, I will just change this one to text-based test and I'll only keep three things. I don't want all the other things. So I'll just put a semicolon here. And so this is the normal data, right? So when you don't apply any styles and all, by default, it will be logged as a normal data. Correct. Now we want to log in the bold format. So in the HTML, if you want to make anything as bold, what you will do? We have a tag called B, right? So you need to surround your entire text with the B tag. So the same thing we are going to do here, guys. So I'm going to just surround my text using B tag here. So if you don't know these HTML basics, please go and refer the HTML basics guys. Just go to Chrome or any browser and search for HTML font formats and then go to the W3 schools or any other websites. You will easily understand. You see, this is a italic one and this is a bold one and this is a normal one and this is a subscript. So all these things you can actually apply in this extent reports also guys. Fine. So just practice here and apply the same here. Fine. So now the next one I want to apply as a italic. So for italic, I is the tag, right? So here also I'll just mention I. 
So this is the closing tag, right? So we don't have any direct way provided in the extent reports guys, but by using the HTML tips and tricks, we can do these things, right? So let me just execute this. So automatically this will open my report. Don't worry. So now you see guys, we have one text that is text based test. And here you can see the first one is printed in the normal format. That means how the normal text will be displayed. And the second one is displayed in the bold format. And the third one is displayed in the italic format, right? And if you want to bold and italic, then you can apply both the things guys. B. So you are applying both the styles into a single thing, right? So now let me run this. So now you see the first one is in the normal format. Second one is in the bold format. Third one is in the italic format and fourth one is in the bold and italic format, right? So this is how you have to log the text based information into the extent reports guys. So now we have covered how to log the text based information using bold and italic formats, right? But apart from this bold and italic formats, there are so many other formats available for the text. So you can use all of those things guys. So you can practice all of those things and implement in your code. Here I'm not showing all those things because it will take a lot of time. So in your free time, you can practice all of those things and implement. Fine. So next we have XML and JSON, which means how to lock the XML and JSON data into the extent reports. So for practicing these things, we need to have the XML and JSON type of data in our machine, right? Here, I'm not going to send any API request and wait for the response guys. So what I will do, I'll get the sample data of XML and JSON from any website. So there is a website called json.org guys. In this website, there are some samples mentioned. There is a sample of JSON data and equivalent XML data. And there is a sample of JSON data and equivalent of XML data. Like that, there are so many combinations here, guys. Okay. So you can pick any of this combination. So what I will do, I'll just pick this one. So this is the XML data, right? So first I want to store that in my machine. So in my machine means in my program, first I want to store. If you have the XML data, then only you can log that information into the extent reports, right? I'll just minimize these things. This is taking so much space. So let me create one string variable and I'll say XML data. And here I'm creating one string variable and storing the XML data inside that. Why? Because in Java, we don't have any direct data type for storing the XML data, right? So even we don't have any data type for storing the XML data or JSON data also. That is why I'm storing the entire XML data in the format of string. Even when you are working with the APIs also, when you get the response, you can apply one method called json.stringify. So when you do that, you will get the string format of data. So which is equivalent to this one, right? So now let's store the JSON data also. So this is the JSON data. String JSON data. So this is also I am storing in the string format only guys. So now I want to log this information into the extent reports. So first what I will do, I'll create separate test cases and I'll directly log this information as a text format only and we will see what happens. Then we can understand why we need to handle these things separately, right? So let me just name this as XML and here log status and the next one is XML data, right? So I'm logging the entire data as a text only. I'm not mentioning anything. So, okay, sorry, here I need to specify it as info, right? So the similar way, I'll copy this entire thing and I'll create one more test for JSON also. This will be JSON data, right? So we are logging the entire XML and JSON data in the format of normal string only. We are not doing any operation, extra operation, right? So we have some string data. So internally it is in the form of JSON or XML. It doesn't matter. We have some string data and we are logging that. And we will see how it will be displayed in the UI. So let's just run this. So now the report is open and let's see the XML based test. So if you open the XML based test, there is a log event created but there is no information displayed under the details section, right? Where is the XML data? We have actually logged this data, 
right but that is not coming here what is the reason so let me show you guys let me just open the developer tools so if you inspect this section here under this td the information is present so you can see menu id equal to file so the same information we have actually logged right so this is only we have copied into our code and we have logged the same thing that means the data is coming into the html file but it is not visible to the user right that is because your HTML file is considering this entire thing as a HTML code and it is not displaying to the user guys. If you are not displaying to the user, then it is a big problem, right? You want to log some data, but the data is not actually displayed to the user. Even though if it is present inside the HTML file, the data is not displayed to the user. Then it is a big problem, right? And let's see the JSON also. Okay, let me close this and let me click on the JSON thing. You can see the JSON data is actually passed here and it is displayed, but it is displayed in the format of normal text, right? You don't have any proper formatting here. Usually your JSON data will have a proper formatting, right? So if you want to understand this one, what you need to do, you need to open any JSON formatter from online and you have to paste this code here and you have to see here, right? Then only you will understand. If you directly watch here, you will not understand anything. So you cannot do the same process for every response, right? If you are logging in multiple responses, let's say 100 or 200 responses, you are logging in the HTML report, then you cannot do the same process for every response, right? Copying the same thing and going into the JSON formatter and paste it here and then understand the response. It is a very tedious task, right? So instead of that, what if you display the JSON data in the format of JSON only here? And what if you display the XML data in the format of XML only here? That will be very good, right? So let's do that guys. So now you understood, right? If you display this data in the format of text, what happens? Your XML data will not be visible and your JSON data will not be understandable, right? So that is the reason we need to handle these things separately. You got the point here? So now what we need to do? Whenever you are logging any information, we have an overloaded method, right? You see, for log, we have something called status and we have something called markup also here. So we are going to use the markup now, guys. Fine. Even for normal status messages also, like pass or false, anything also, we have the markup. So here, okay, let's do the info only directly. So I'll use the info method only instead of log method. And here we need to use something called markup helper not markup guys. If you see, it is asking you to use the markup only, but the markup is actually a interface. You cannot use the markup interface here. So you need to use the markup helper class here. Markup helper dot create code block. So when you are creating the code block, you need to pass the code that you are actually logging in and you need to specify the code language also. So select the second one. So let's pass the XML data first. And this is in the form of XML, right? So you need to specify that. And here we need to use something called code language. This is a enum. From this, you need to specify what type of language this is. So whatever the data that you are trying to display here, what type of data it is. So it is a XML type of data, right? So let me choose the XML from here. So the same thing that you need to apply for the this thing also, guys, JSON based data also. So here I'm directly using the info method, right? So here, let me use the log method only. So just to make sure like there is no difference between both of these things, fine. So now here, instead of this, I'll try to use the markup. So instead of directly mentioning the JSON data, I'll try to use the markup and I'll create one code block. So first parameter will be your code, what you want to actually display. And the second one will be your code language. That means whatever the data that you are passing, in which language this code is there that you need to specify. So this is in the format of JSON, right? Now let me just run this. So the report is opened and if you open the XML based test, you can see the XML data is properly aligned and it is visible to the user also, right? This time it is not considered as the HTML code because we have inserted the entire data into one code block. So it is actually visible to the user and it is properly aligned. You see the spacing and all, 
it is properly aligned right and if you click on the json based test the data is visible and it is properly aligned now you can easily understand right no need to go for any online formatters and all right you can easily understand what exactly this json file is representing without any formatting external formatting it is internally formatting and showing it for you because we are using the code blocks and markup here so with this markup helper we are able to format your data fine so whenever you are working with the json type of data or xml type of data you have to use the markup helper and create a code block with that so that your extent reports will understand what you are trying to display and it will display that information in a understandable format just like this so now we can see this json data is properly formatted right so we can easily understand this data so the same applies to the xml data also here so this xml data is also properly formatted and you can easily understand that right so this is how you have to work with the json and xml type of data guys fine and next we have collection data that means what if you have any list of values or set of values or map of values how do you display those informations into the extent reports that we will see so i'm going to show you all these things guys list set map all these things i will show you so let me just jump into the eclipse so now let me create the list type of data and map type of data and set type of data also because we want to display all these things into the extent reports right so let me create those things so now list type of data and map type of data and set type of data all the things are ready right so let's just display this information into the extent reports so let me just copy this and let me put it here and here let me rename this to list so now i want to display the list type of data into the extent reports right so for this also we have to use the markup helper only guys so under the markup helper we have two methods one is create ordered list and the other one is create unordered list so using these two methods you can display any collection data into the extent reports right but what is the difference between these two things like create ordered list and create unordered list so when you say create ordered list it will have the numbering format but when you use create unordered list it will have the bullet points but it will not have any numbering so let me just try it that once the report is generated you can easily understand so first i want to pass the list data right i'll do one thing guys i'll show you both the things here so here info markup helper dot create unordered list so for everything i will show you both of these things guys fine so this is for list test and let me repeat the same for set and map also the map data right so the tests are ready and let me just execute this to see the changes so the tests are executed and you can see list based test set based test and map based test also added here right so just open the list based test so here we have actually logged two things right so in each of this test we have logged two events actually one is with the ordered list and the other one is with the in unordered list right so for ordered list you can see the numbering format came right so all your items all your values will be ordered using the numbering format and in unordered list all your values will be listed using the bullet points okay they are ordered but not using the numbering format but by using the bullet points fine so this is the difference between order list and unordered list guys fine so now your list of values are displayed here so when you display the list of values like this it is easy to understand right so each value will be displayed in one line and it is easy to read and understand them right and the same goes to the set also so even the set also we have used ordered list and unordered list one is displayed using the numbering system and the other one is displayed using bullet point system right and then map so even map also same thing but the only difference is in list and set we will have only the values right but in map we will have key comma value so the key comma value will be displayed like this guys there will be a colon symbol in the middle so before colon you will have the key and after colon you will have the value 
So key comma value pairs will be displayed like this. Fine. So this is how you have to work with the collection data guys. Either it is list type or set type or map type. Anything is fine. Fine. And then highlight any message. So out of all the log events, if you want to highlight any log event, how do you do that? So let's see that. So here, let me create one more test. And let me just name this as highlight log test, highlight log test, fine. So here also I'm going to use the markup only guys. So for all these things, we are going to use the markup helper only, fine. So in markup helper, there is a method called create label. So we have to use that method and this method will accept two parameters. One is text and the other one is extent color. So text is what you want to actually log. So, okay, let me just open this. So here we are logging some text information, right? So we can log the text information and highlight the text. So highlighting can be done using any color, but you have to provide the text also, right? So that text is the first parameter here. So let me just add the text like this is a highlighted message some sample text and next we need to add the color coding here right so there is a enum called extent color so from this you have to choose the colors but which color do you need to choose it depends on your requirement guys if you are displaying any error message then you have to choose the red color if you are displaying any past details then you have to choose the green color if you are displaying any other information maybe you can go for yellow color right so i'll just choose red color and let's run this and show you how it looks like. And one more thing guys, uh, just to differentiate, I will add the normal text also here. Otherwise you will not clearly understand how it will be highlighted, right? So info, the same message I will copy and I'll put it here. This is not a highlighted message, right? So let me run this. So let's go to the last test, highlight log test. So now you can see this is the normal text guys. You are not applying any highlighting here. This is the normal text and this is the highlighted text. You can easily spot this text, right? Even if you have 100 log events also, you can easily identify what is highlighted here, right? So if you want to highlight anything, let's say you are displaying any error message or let's say you are displaying anything like assertion details or something, then you want to highlight that then you can use the highlighting option guys, fine. So it is very easy. You have to use a markup helper and create a label. So when you create a label, you have to provide the text as well as the color. So that color is your highlighted color. And the next one is exception. So how do you log the exception details to your extent reports? So let's see that. So whenever you are working with the exceptions, you have to remember one point guys. What is the superclass of all the exceptions in Java? The superclass of all the exceptions in Java is throwable, right? So either you can create the instance for throwable or you can actually create the exception also here. But in your case, you will be having the exception already, right? I mean, whenever the exception is there, you are logging the exception. So you already have the exception instance there. Or if you want to create the exception explicitly, you can create that one also. Fine. I'll show you both of these options guys. Don't worry. So if I want to create one simple exception, I can divide any value with a zero, right? So I'll get a divide by zero exception and I'll have the exception instance already here. So I can directly log that one, right? So let me create the test here. I'll say exception. And under this, whenever you are calling any log event, so inside that log event, you have something called a throwable, right? So the log event methods are overloaded. Either it is log method or individual status methods also. All the things are actually overloaded methods only. So there is something called throwable, right? So for this throwable thing, you need to pass this instance, the exception thing. So one more thing I'll create with specific thing, like customized exception guys. You can create the new throwable or create a runtime exception. Let me create the runtime exception here. 
So when you're creating the runtime exception, you can actually provide the message also. It's like a customized exception. So I'll just say this is a custom exception. Fine. So now we have the exception and let's create the test just like this. Exception test two. And I need to provide the T here, right? Because the throwable instance is T here. So let me just run this. So the report is generated and click on the exception test one. You can see the exception details here, guys. What type of exception it is and in which line it is thrown. All those informations are displayed here, right? So this is the automatic generated exception. That means it is thrown by the code itself, right? So that is why it clearly understood what type of exception it is and it locked java.lang.arithmetic exception. And the second one is custom exception. The exception test two is custom exception, right? So here it is displaying java.lang.runtime exception because we have created a runtime exception here, right? So that is why it is displayed as runtime exception. And even here also it is displayed which line number it is actually thrown, right? So this is how you have to log the exception things. So whenever you have any exception, automatically your extent reports will add one tab here that is called exception. So when you click on that, you can see how many test cases are failed or passed using this exception. Okay, basically whenever you have any exception, you have to fail the test, right? So let's fail the test. Let's use the fail method here also. Exception test three. Okay, let me run this one more time. So now if you click on this, you can see because of java.lang.runtime exception, two tests are failed. What are those two tests? Exception test two and exception test three. So those details are also clearly mentioned here, right? So like this, you can actually filter your test cases based on your exception also. So this is how you have to log different type of information to the extent reports guys. So now you understood, right? So we have logged text information and also we have logged the XML and JSON data and we have logged collection data and we have highlighted the message also and then we logged the exception details also. So all these things we have clearly seen, right? So this is for this video guys. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.